What's up guys, I'm Danny702 and today's adventure brings us to the Flamingo Las Vegas. Today I wanted to bring back a little bit of vintage Vegas. So here we are at the Flamingo, which is the third hotel and resort casino to be built on the Las Vegas Strip. And it is the oldest that's still in operation today. Now let's go back about 75 years ago when this whole area was just a lonely desert road. And definitely not what you see here today. was the highway leading from Utah to Las Vegas and at that time it was just a dusty highway. Thomas Huell uh, had come to Las Vegas to open location for his chain of hotels and saw potential in the lonely highway. In 1941 the El Rancho Vegas was the first resort to be opened on the Las Vegas Boulevard. Western theming was the bee's knees back in the day and the hotel offered a cowboy frontier type of interior. Its employees wore cowboy outfits and the floor was covered with sawdust. It was a first of its kind. It had beautiful landscapings, entertainment, and even a swimming pool that sat right behind the highway that would tempt all of the travelers that were coming down the lonely highway. Dress informal and wear your westerns was the marketing of the resort. The hotel had a good run, but in 1960 it was destroyed by a fire and the property had been sold. The second hotel and casino to be open on the strip was Hotel Last Frontier. The Last Frontier was built close to the Orancho and had the same type of western theme, though its owners wanted to make its property grander than its neighbors. They built it with more greenery, with a pool that was even closer to the highway, and more parking. It wanted to be as western as you can get. The old frontier also had a stagecoach that would pick you up from the airport and take you back to the hotel. They offered horse carriage rides. Uh, it had plenty of cow horns and uh, the wagon wheels all over the hotel. And it was an instant success. It was said the Western hospitality at the last frontier greets you from the moment that you enter the lobby. Now even Elvis Presley had its first appearance in Las Vegas in 1956 here. Now I do remember seeing the old frontier on the strip. It closed in 2007, so it had a really long run. Now, unfortunately, the property seats completely abandoned with nothing on it. It did have a few variations of its name over time and a few changes in its owners. Some of its owners included popular members of the Mafia. It also included Howard Hughes and even Steve Wynn. It remained open from 1942 all the way to 2007. Back to the Flamingo, the third resort to be built on the Strip. This hotel would be unlike the Western theme that everybody was used to. The Flamingo Hotel would be a modern resort, offering its high class to the Hollywood crowd and the high rollers in mind. It did have carpeting flooring. It also set the theme for what you see in all the hotels today. So there were no windows and no cloths. That way when you were inside, especially doing your gambling, sort of forgot about the rest of the world. A well-known mobster named Benjamin Siegel, aka Bugsy Siegel, though you wouldn't want to call him that to his face, was brought to Las Vegas to help with the bookies. He soon saw the potential in Las Vegas and wanted to own his own business. So he did take over the El Cortez on Fremont Street, but eventually had his eye on owning his own. After meeting Billy Wilkerson, who was the original owner of the Flamingo, Bugsy made Billy an offer he could not refuse. He bought the property from Billy, who was losing his money for the casino on his horrible addiction to gambling. The Flamingo connects to the Link, which is probably one of our favorite spots on the Las Vegas Boulevard. It offers things like the Gordon Ramsay, which is Eddie's favorite fish and chip spot. They also have In-N-Out, and they're opening a Canneries, which is known for their uh, pastrami sandwich. Eddie and I have had the hardest time trying to find a good pastrami sandwich out here. In 1946, the Flamingo opened its doors 
close to a shaky opening night. They had to close the stores for a little while to uh, finish the project. And once it reopened, it was an instant hit. It was known to show up to his expectations. While Bugsy was at his Hollywood home, he was retired in a mobster fashion. The Flamingo is now owned by Caesars Entertainment, and the original buildings may be gone, but its rich history and its groundbreaking ways still remains today. This is the spot where the original tower stood. According to the plaque, from 1946 until 1993, the original tower was right here. Here's Bugsy right there. Now, they said that he was a charmer. People said that he really didn't seem like a mafia type. He seemed more like a Hollywood star. All the girls loved him. Though, he got his nickname Bugsy because he was known to bug out. Excuse me, sir. Table for one, please. What are they doing? And it's a rare sighting. The Flamingo Mermaid. I thought she was just a myth, but there she is. Thanks for watching my second video. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on Las Vegas, its rich history and modern attractions. Even more adventures to come soon as we will travel to California, Arizona and surrounding areas. Once again, I apologize for my inexperience. I even deleted my very first video after 24 hours of it being up. What a noob. <laughs> but I'm hoping that I get better with more practice, especially on the editing. If anybody has a good editor that isn't that expensive, go ahead and leave me a comment. Links again, guys. With my fella. What else do they say when they're back then? Quite the bee's knees. I don't think someone says to be. No? No. Listen here, see? <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> uh, what else then? Cool cats.